just want to make a quick video here of how to do engraving in the middle of a part without having to stop and change anything. So, uh, as you can see, I have a part text that says Made in USA. I just used the text feature in the left side of Sipecut. Uh, the settings are pretty straightforward. It's the same as adding text in pretty much any other program. Just drew a simple square box around it. I added a lead here and a, uh, a gap in the top just so I don't have to chase my parts around in the scrap tray. So uh, all you have to do to do this is select the, uh, the cut section and change it to a different layer. So in this case, I'm using green and pink. Then when you go to your layers tab, you'll notice you have two layer options. So the pink, the green layer, I'm running 10 meters a minute, uh, three millimeter cut height. Now it's a lot higher than you normally cut at, but of course we're engraving, so I'm trying not to use the laser up close. I'm trying to keep it up nice and high and let the air blow out of it because I'm not trying to cut the steel. Um, the, let's see here, uh, I cut current is left at 100%. I'm not sure what that feature does yet. Uh, cut power is 5%, cut frequency 5,000 hertz. This stuff's all at zero because, of course, you don't want to run a delay time if you are engraving because it's starting to mark the moment the laser turns on. Focus I have is positive 1.5, mostly because that's the same as my cutting spec. Uh, I'm running 4, 0.4 MPA of O2, again, because it's cutting spec. I could do a low pressure on this, but I'm, I'm not going. I'll play with that more in the future. Uh, one double nozzle. And this is this is my lead parameters for doing another thing, so ignore that. I just I copy and pasted this for my cutting thing. I'm also using dynamic power adjust uh, at 80% speed. I'm running 100% power. Now it's important to note that 100% power is 100% of your cut power. So 100% is not 100% of the machine. It is 100% of 5%. And then it goes down here to. Uh, at 10% speed, it is 50%. And that's just a constant line. And that, of course, is 2.5% of the machine. So uh, I know I said all that pretty fast. Just look closely at this and copy it if you're going to do a basic text. Now, I'll, I'll do more on this in the future. This is just a quick video. I played with these settings until it didn't cut through the material and made a nice, clean etch. Uh, of course, then my cut layer, same speed, same lift height, point three millimeter on the cut height. That's your nozzle standoff distance. Uh, of course, same pressure since it's the same regulator. 100% current, 100% power, 5,000 hertz. Delay time of 100 milliseconds. Uh, focus again of plus 1.5, 4 MPA, one double. Of course, it's the same nozzle because you can't change nozzles in the middle of a cut. I'm not using dynamic power adjust. I probably will start using it in the future, but for now, it's cutting just fine. Pierce settings are set to no pierce. Just the simple delay time is enough to punch through. This is 22 gauge cold rolled steel. All right, now that we've gone through that entire long mouthful, we are gonna go ahead and process this part. So I'm going to come down here, press the shutter button until the red light comes on, find a nice little location where I wanna be, press the frame button to confirm I'm good press the shutter button and then I'm going to real quick drop down this door here and hit start. Uh, I'm start okay, and hit start. It is important to um, double check to make sure it does the text before it cuts the perimeter. It should be in your sort feature. Um, but there you have it. Also, run your exhaust blower. I have it off so you can hear me, otherwise... And that smells really strong, actually. Take the blower on real quick. One second. Okay. At your leisure. All right, so there it is out of the machine. Uh, it looks all brown and smudgy, but if you wipe it... kind of aggressively... Don't know if you can see. Yeah, it looks like you see it. Mm -hmm. Looks really nice. Just a little darkening in the letters. The dynamic power adjust is very important. The first uh, couple I did, it would burn through at the corners uh, a little bit. 
now I have it the dynamic power adjust, it looks perfect. I could not ask for more. And it's all done in a single setup.